Hi, I'm Jim. I'm Rinda. We are Hardiness Approach. We're in the meadows, in the forest, in the aspen. It's wonderful. Today we're going to be talking a bit about emotional wellness. Important subject. And homesteading. Yes, absolutely. A few years ago, Rinda was... Uh, it's been more than a few, hasn't it? <laughs> Oh, time goes by, doesn't it? Seven or eight years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Rinda was working as a home health nurse in the Portland, Oregon area. And she was having a, a lot of experiences with patients where she was, it was difficult to treat them. And you, home health nurses get to spend a lot of time and interact with their patients and with their patients' families. And she was having trouble getting them to respond to a lot of the treatments that were going on. And what she found is that if she were to talk to them... Well, the reason that it was really tough was because they were depressed. Yes, and they I, were I'm forgetting an important thing, but that's yeah. our subject today, yeah. right? So, yeah, depressed and anxious, and before she could be effective in treating them and have it really work and them ha have good results, outcomes, she, she found that she needed to talk to them and... Uh, understand where they were coming from and what was happening in their lives and as she got to know them more and hearing stories from them uh, what she found is that stories from one patient would be meaningful to another patient they didn't know it was about somebody else that she knew in maybe in their neighborhood even but definitely in, in the vicinity they didn't know that they just knew these were stories that resonated with them that that touched their hearts that let them know they weren't alone. There were other people feeling and experiencing the same kinds of challenges and emotions. And it, it helped cheer them up. It helped them at least have a little bit of hope, a little bit of comfort. So she began writing the stories down and eventually put them into book form and published it. The book's called Voices from My Heart. And I published it because my readers kept asking me to publish it. <laughs> my your, patients. Your patients, yeah. They said, oh, please put this in book, put this in book. So it happened. Today, I would like to share one story with you. And I'm just going to share part of it. Um, and we're going to kind of go from there. It's called Geese Have Lessons to Share. As I walked out of the patient's room, I saw a gentleman sitting in a wheelchair near a window. He had a short white beard, and as I neared him, he said, look, and pointed out the window. My inclination was to smile, nod, and walk on by. But however, there below the window was a beautiful, full-grown Canadian goose, which I happen to love. What the man could not see from where he was sitting, though, is that the mate to this one goose was sitting just out of his view. I stepped back and he moved where I had been standing so that he could see both of them together. I started to walk away and he looked up to me and said, uh, he looked up at me and said, I used to live on a farm. I stopped and turned. He proceeded to tell me about his farm and when that when he was a boy of 13, he raised rabbits all by himself. I told him that I had lived on a farm not so long ago. And he replied in a melancholy voice, it was wonderful, wasn't it? And I assured him that it was because I could still remember and feel the land around me, which I missed. I reached out my hand and introduced myself, taking his hand and he introduced himself. I told him it was a pleasure to meet him, and he smiled and said it was his pleasure and wished me a good day. He then looked back at the window to watch the two magnificent creatures that had pulled us back in time to a different place and allowed two strangers to share a tender moment. When I read this today, I pulled it out and I went, oh my <laughs> goodness, wow how I love homesteading and I love what it does to us and for us. And then I went back and Googled something to see, well, talk to me about homesteading and love. And there, 
the number two thing was hardiness approach, why we love homesteading. And so we're going to share some of that with you today. A lot of people think that homesteading is very romantic and fun and easy and la 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 la. But it's not so much, is it? Uh, that's not been my... I mean, it is enjoyable. <laughs> it I love it. There's so much about it to love, but it's not a walk in the park. So you have to come get out in the morning and take care of your animals, whether it's... Uh, nice, cold, hot whatever it might be. Christmas, oh. not Christmas, yeah. whatever it is. Whether you have a really busy day ahead of you, whether you've had a full night's sleep, the animals still need food and water That's and right. to be taken care of. And you kind of get dirty. What are some of the dirty oh. that you have? I mean, there, there's, I, you know, dirty, I, I don't, it doesn't <laughs> bother me anymore. I mean, I can put my hands in almost anything. So dirt, <laughs> manure, amniotic fluid, um, Any other kind of fluids that animals may give off. And my, I just say dirt, because it's a dirt, yeah, dirty, dirty thing. Yeah. Um, especially when we're in Missouri, we shower a lot. <laughs> On a homestead, you're also going to feel more fulfillment than you've felt before. You're also going to find muscles that maybe you didn't know you've had. And you're going to find that there are tasks you didn't think you could do that you'll find that you'll be doing. You never imagined yourself doing them. And you're going to find yourself at the end of the day dropping into bed and going right to sleep. <laughs> One of the reasons that we love homesteading is because it fills our soul. It is our cafeteria. Yeah. It's our secret garden. It's our, it's our playground, too. It's our playground. <laughs> It's where we discover life. And no, we're not 20 years old. Not anymore. We still feel that way sometimes. I though. know, because we work really hard at it. And we are able to build our homestead so that we are living sustainably in place, right? And that's important to us, living sustainably in place. It's crucial. Especially for us who have had to travel around so many times. When we go back to Missouri this time, we're like, just bury us on the farm and everything will be fine. There you go. <laughs> um, one of the things that's so amazing about a homestead is the animals. How they, they love the way humans love. Do you remember Clara Bell, our cow? Uh, she, you know, Tucker. We had not had a lot of experience with cows, and we'd always thought of them: a cow's a cow, right? Oh my goodness! This cow had she so much dance. love for us, <laughs> so much personality. But our dog Tucker, big Pyrenees mix. Uh, those two, they had a relationship. I, I just—they would lick each other's nose. I mean, they thought they were the same. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Let me stop here and answer a question. Um, we have been asked um, that people have not seen our dog lately. And it's been about four months since we um, had to put our Oliver down. And we didn't tell anybody because it was... Uh, it was, it was, it was hard. It was I too mean, hard. Was He'd been with us for a long time. And 14 years, and many, many of you have said, we just haven't seen him lately. Is your dog okay? And our dog is in heaven. He got cancer, and he was in tremendous pain, and it was time. And so um, that's why you haven't seen our sweet Oliver anymore. And... Um, he is one of the animals that is always in our heart and will always be there. And he photobombed our videos over and over and over. I think he knew what he was doing. <laughs> and he's joy. So animals are joy. I mean, chickens are joy. And, and they, animals give you milk and fiber and meat. Eggs. And eggs and... Everything's so wonderful. So, do we love Homestead? Yes. And can we hardly wait till we can get back to our uh, Missouri farm? You know, there, there's a lot that we need to get taken care of first. And it's everything we can do to hang on, 
and keep at it until we're really ready. This time we want to be thoroughly ready when we get there so that we can hit the ground running and not have any impediments. So let me end by finishing a little bit more from Voices from My Heart. We can learn lessons. We can learn lessons from the geese. They are devoted to their family and their mate. They mate for life. They will put themselves in harm's way to save their mate. If their mate is injured, they will fly down and sit with them until the mate has recovered or died. They fly in groups. They support each other. We hope that you can find joy in your homestead, wherever your homestead is and however your homestead is, to find joy in the animals and the farm and the, and, and the do it food. All, do it all in a way that you can keep your emotional stability in place. Yeah. Let, it, let it fill not just your belly, but your heart and your mind. And as I often write in my book when I'm giving someone's bought it and I write to them, listen to the voices of your heart and you too will probably want to move to a homestead. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for watching. Share, like, and subscribe. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.